Okay, so today I'm going to be reading to you about paradise. And I'm going to read to you about the conditions in paradise. What I'm reading to you from is the Cave of Treasures, the book of the Cave of Treasures. So just to open it up, I'm going to start with this portion so that you understand what the, the content will be like. Now Moses, the prophet, said that God planted paradise in Eden and placed Adam there. Genesis 2.8 Notes Paradise was situated on Mount Eden, beyond the ocean, and it was filled with fruit-bearing trees. The great river which sprung up in it was parted into four heads, viz. The Pishon, which flowed through Havilah, where there were barrels and gold and stones of price. The Gihon, or the Nile of Egypt. The Decloth, or the Tigris, which flows through Assyria. And the Parath, the Euphrates. The keepers of paradise were Enoch and Elijah, and in it dwelt the souls of the righteous. The souls of sinners dwelt in a deep place outside Eden. The tree of good and evil that was in paradise did not possess these properties naturally, but only through the deed which was wrought by its means. Adam and Eve did not become naked and die the death of sin because they desired and ate of the fruit of the fig tree, but because they transgressed the law. Okay, so that's just the one portion that I'll read it to start with. And the reason that I'm going to start there and point that out is that for the focus on the North Pole. And so we'll get into the next part is the symbolism of Eden. And you'll see how, again, it ties it up and makes it very clear where Eden is. Eden is the Holy Church. And the Church is the compassion of God, which he was about to extend to the children of men. For God, according to his knowledge, knew what Satan had devised against Adam, and therefore he set Adam beforehand in the bosom of his compassion, even as the blessed Davis singeth concerning him in the psalm, XC, saying, Lord, thou hast been an abiding place for us throughout all generations. That is to say, thou hast made us to have our abiding place in thy compassion. And when entreating God on behalf of the redemption of the children of men, David said, Remember thy church, which thou didst acquire in olden time. Psalm LXXIV 2 That is to say, Remember thy compassion, which thou art about to spread over our feeble race. So Eden is the holy church, and the paradise which was in it is the land of rest and the inheritance of life, which God hath prepared for all the holy children of men. And because Adam was priest and king and prophet, God brought him into paradise that he might minister in Eden, the holy church, even as the blessed man Moses testifieth concerning him, saying, that he might serve God by means of priestly ministration with praise, and that he might keep that commandment which had been entrusted to him by the compassion of God. And God made Adam and Eve to dwell in paradise. True is this word, and it proclaimeth the truth. That tree of life which was in the midst of paradise prefigured the redeeming cross, which is the veritable tree of life. And this it was that was fixed in the middle of the earth. So that's the point that I wanted to get to there, that the tree of life, which was the prefigured, the redeeming cross. So the cross is the veritable tree of life, that it was fixed in the middle of the earth and that we're talking about that Eden is in the middle of the earth and the tree of life is in the middle of Eden and so it's in the middle of the earth which is the North Pole so that's where we're gonna I just wanted to start there so that you guys understand that portion and 
then I'm going to carry on with this story. I'm going to read you this story because it's amazing. It talks about so many amazing things and fills in a lot of the questions that people have about the Bible and about the story of when Satan was actually thrown out of heaven and some other interesting parts. The Cave of Treasures, the first 6,000 years, and the first six days of creation. The creation, the first day. In the beginning, on the first day, which was the holy first day of the week, the chief and firstborn of all the days, God created the heavens, and the earth, and the waters, and the air, and the fire, and the hosts which are invisible, that is to say the angels, archangels, thrones, lords, principalities, powers, cherubim, and seraphim, and all the ranks and companies of spiritual beings and the light, and the night, and the daytime, and the gentle winds and the strong winds, i.e. storms. All these were created on the first day. And on the first day of the week the spirit of holiness, one of the persons of the Trinity, hovered over the waters, and through the hovering thereof over the face of the waters, the waters were blessed so that they might become producers of offspring, and they became hot, and the whole nature of the waters glowed with heat, and the leaven of creation was united to them. As the mother bird maketh warm her young by the embrace of her closely covering wings, and the young birds acquire form through the warmth of the heat which they derive from her, so through the operation of the spirit of holiness, the spirit, the paraclete, the leaven of the breath of life was united to the waters when he hovered over them. Notes According to Solomon, a Nestorian bishop of Parath Meshan, or Al Basra, a city on the right bank of the Shat al Arab, about AD 1222, the creation of the heavens and the earth has been planned from everlasting and immutable mind of God. He created seven substances or natures in silence without voice the heaven earth water air fire the angels and darkness the earth was plunged in the midst of the waters above the waters was air and above the air was fire water is cold and moist air is hot and moist Fire is hot and dry, but it had no luminosity until the fourth day, when the luminaries were created. The angels are divided into nine classes and three orders. The upper order contains cherubim, seraphim, and thrones, and these are bearers of God's throne. The middle order contains lords, powers, and rulers. The lower order contains principalities, archangels, and angels. Compare the thrones or dominions or principalities or powers of Colossians 1.16. The cherubim are an intellectual motion. The seraphim are a fiery motion. The thrones are a fixed motion. The lords are a motion which governs the motions beneath it and controls the devils. The powers are a motion which gives effect to God's will. The rulers are a motion which rules spiritual measures and the sun, moon, and stars. The principalities are a motion which rules the elements. The archangels are a swift operative motion which governs every living creature except man. And the angels are a motion which has spiritual knowledge of everything which is in heaven or on the earth. The guardian angel of every man belongs to this last class. The number of each class of angels is equal to the number of all mankind from Adam to the resurrection. The heaven in which the angels live is above the waters, which are above the firmament, and they minister to their God there, being invisible to bodily eyes. The angels are not self-existent beings, they were created. On the other hand, darkness is a self-existent nature or substance. Solomon of al Basra does not accept the view that the spirit which hovered over the waters was the Holy Spirit. See the Book of the Bee, Ed Budge, chapters 1 through 7. 
the creation second day and on the second day God made the lower heaven and called it Rekia that is to say what is solid and fixed or firmament this he did that he might make known that the lower heaven doth not possess the nature of the heaven which is above it and that it is different in appearance from that heaven which is above it for the heaven above it is of fire and that second heaven is Nura i.e. light and this lower heaven is Darpishion and because it hath the dense nature of water it hath been called Rekia and on the second day God made a separation between the waters and the waters that is to say between the waters which are above Rekia and the waters which were below and the ascent of these waters which were above heaven took place on the second day and they were like unto a dense black cloud of thick darkness thus were they raised up there and they mounted up and behold they stand above the Rekia in the air and they do not spread and they make no motion to any side notes according to the book of the bee the creation of the firmament enabled God to allot a dwelling place to the angels where also the souls of the righteous could be received after the general resurrection the great abyss of water which gave also the souls of the righteous could be received after the general resurrection the great abyss of water which God created on the first day was divided by him into three parts one part he left on the earth for the use of man and beast and to form rivers and seas of the second part he made the firmament and the third part the place above the firmament after the resurrection all these parts will return to their original state the word Darpishion is a difficulty and I cannot explain it the variant forms Dirikon and Dertikon appear in Ethiopic books wherein it is said to be a name of the sixth heaven the creation third day and on the third day God commanded the waters that were below the firmament Rekia to be gathered together in one place and the dry land to appear and when the covering of water had been rolled up from the face of the earth the earth showed itself to be in an unsettled and unstable state that is to say it was of a damp or moist and yielding nature and the waters were gathered together into seas that were under the earth and within it and upon it and God made in the earth from below corridors and shafts and channels for the passage of the waters and the winds which come from within the earth ascend by means of these corridors and channels and also the heat and also the wind for the service of the earth now as for the earth the lower part of it is like unto a thick sponge for it resteth on the waters and on this third day God commanded the earth and it brought forth herbs and vegetables and it conceived in its interior trees and seeds and plants and roots note on this day the waters gathered together in the depths of the earth sand was set as a limit for the waters of the seas and the mountains and hills appeared and the sages say that paradise was created on this day but the rabbis held the view that it existed before the world Solomon of Al-Basra says that the earth produced herbs and trees by its own power and that the luminaries had nothing to do with vegetable growth book of the bee chapter 9 the creation fourth day and on the fourth day God made the Sun and the moon and the stars and as soon as the heat of the Sun was diffused over the surface of the earth the earth became hard and rigid and lost its flaccidity because the humidity and the dampness caused by the waters were taken away from it the Creator made the sphere of the Sun of fire and filled it with light and God gave unto the sphere of the moon and the stars bodies of water and air and filled them with light and God gave unto the sphere of the moon and the stars bodies of water and air and filled them with light and when the dust of the earth became hot it brought forth all the trees and plants and seeds and roots which had been conceived inside it on the third day plate one 
limestone monolith Pasargadai in Persia, sculptured in low relief with a portrait figure of the Fravashi or genius of Cyrus the Great, the friend of the Jews. The figure of Cyrus is rather larger than life-size and is winged after the manner of gods and kings on the Assyrian bas reliefs, and the decoration of the hem of his garment is Assyrian in character. His crown was copied from some Egyptian bas relief sculptured with the figure of a king, and represents the Horus Knemu or Amen, the two cobras of the upper and lower country, and the triple symbol of loyalty resting on solar disks and terminating in disks. The inscription, I am Cyrus, the king, the Achaemenian, has been broken off. Notes. The cases of the sun, moon, and stars were made of aerial or ethereal matter after the manner of lamps, and God filled them with a mixture of fire which had no light in it, and with light which had no heat in it. The path of the luminaries is beneath the firmament. They are not fixed as the ignorant think, but are guided in their courses by the angels. The Ethiopians have a tradition that when the sun was first made, its light was twelve times as strong as it is today. The angels complained that the heat was too strong and that it hampered them in the performance of their duties, whereupon God divided it into twelve parts. The Creation, Fifth Day And on the fifth day God commanded the waters, and they brought forth all kinds of fish di of diverse appearances, and creatures which move about and twist themselves and wriggle in the waters, and serpents, and leviathan, and beasts of terrible aspects, and feathered fowl of the air and of the waters. And on this same day God made from the earth all the cattle and wild beasts, and all the reptiles which creep about upon the earth. Notes, according to the Book of the Bee, Chapter 12 Beasts and animals were created on Friday evening, and they can therefore see at night as well as in the daytime. In the Book of Mysteries of Heaven and Earth, whales and the behemoth are mentioned with Leviathan. The Creation, Sixth Day And on the sixth day, which is the eve of the Sabbath, God formed man out of the dust, and Eve from his rib. And on the seventh day God rested from his labors, and it is called Sabbath, the creation of Adam. Now the formation of Adam took place in this wise. On the sixth day, which is the eve of the Sabbath, at the first hour of the day, when, when quietness was reigning over all the ranks of the angels and the hosts of heaven, God said, Come ye, let us make man in our image, and according to our likeness. Now by this word, us, he maketh known concerning the glorious persons of the Trinity. And when the angels heard this utterance, they fell into a state of fear and trembling. And they said to one another, A mighty miracle will be made manifest to us this day, that is to say, the likeness of God, our Maker. And they saw the right hand of God opened out flat and stretched out over the whole world, and all creatures were lected in the palm of his right hand. And they saw that he took from the whole mass of the earth one grain of dust, and from the whole nature of water one drop of water, and from all the air which is above one puff of wind, and from the whole nature of fire a little of its heat and warmth. And the angels saw that when these four feeble or inert materials were placed in the palm of his right hand, that is to say, wind and heat and dryness and moisture, God formed Adam. Now, for what reason did God make Adam out of these four materials, unless it were to show that everything which is in the world should be in subordination to him through them? He took a grain from the earth in order that everything in nature which is formed of earth should be subject unto him, and a drop of water in order that everything which is in the seas and rivers should be his, and a puff of air so that all kinds of creatures which fly in the air might be given unto him and the heat of fire so that all the beings that are fiery in nature and the celestial hosts might be his helpers. God formed Adam with his holy hands in his own image and likeness. And when the angels saw Adam's glorious appearance, they were greatly moved by the beauty thereof. For they saw the image of his face burning with glorious splendor like the orb of the sun. And the light of his eyes was like the light of the sun and the image of his body was like unto the sparkling of crystal. 
and when he rose at full length and stood upright in the center of the earth, he planted his two feet on that spot whereupon was set up the cross of our Redeemer. For Adam was created in Jerusalem. There he was arrayed in the apparel of sovereignty, and there was the crown of glory set upon his head. There was he made king and priest and prophet. There did God make him to sit upon his honorable throne. And there did God give him dominion over all creatures and things. And all the wild beasts and all the cattle and the feathered fowl were gathered together. And they passed before Adam, and he assigned names to them. And they bowed their heads before him. And everything in nature worshipped him, and submitted themselves unto him. And the angels and the hosts of heaven heard the voice of God saying unto him, Adam, behold, I have made thee king and priest and prophet and lord and head and governor of everything which hath been made and created. And they shall be in subjection unto thee, and they shall be thine. And I have given unto thee power over everything which I have created. And when the angels heard this speech, they all bowed the knee and worshipped him. Notes, the Jews consider that the words, Come, let us make man, refer to God and the angels. But the fathers of the Syrian church understand that God refers to the three persons of the Trinity, some fathers believe that Adam was formed on the morning of the sixth day, outside paradise. But others think that the formation of Adam took place in the evening in paradise. According to some, paradise was created before the world, and according to others, on the third day. Bar Hebraeus says that Adam was created on Friday of the first week of Nisan, April, the first month of the first year of the world. So Nisan is supposed to be New Year's. The Egyptian and Ethiopian churches have a tradition that the angels were not all created at the same time. The great Archangel Michael, who is called the Angel of the Face, and all his rank of angels were created in the first hour of Friday. The priests in the second, and the thrones in the third. The dominions or sultans in the fourth hour of Friday. The lords in the fifth, and the powers in the sixth, the tens of thousands in the seventh, the governors in the eighth, the masters in the ninth. After the governors, the rank of angels governed by Satan were created, and then the tenth rank. According to a Coptic tradition preserved in the Discourse on Abaton, the Angel of Death by Timothy, Archbishop of Rakoti, Alexandria, the clay of which Adam was made was brought by the angel Muriel from the land of the east. When God had made his body, he left it lying for forty days and forty nights without putting breath into it. At the request of our Lord, who promised to become Adam's advocate and to go down into the world, God breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life three times, saying, Live, 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 according to the type of my divinity. Thereupon Adam rose up and worshipped the Father, saying, My Lord and my God, Budge Coptic Martyrdoms, page 482. The Revolt of Satan and the Battle in Heaven. And when the prince of the lower order of angels saw what great majesty had been given unto Adam, he was jealous of him from that day, and he did not wish to worship him. And he said unto his hosts, Ye shall not worship him, and ye shall not praise him with the angels. It is meet that ye should worship me, because I am fire and spirit, and not that I should worship a thing of dust which hath been fashioned of fine dust. And the, rebel made it, and the rebel meditating these things would not render obedience to God. And of his own free will he asserted his independence and separated himself from God. But he was swept away out of heaven and fell. And the fall of himself and of all his company from heaven took place on the sixth day, at the second hour of the day. And the apparel of their glorious state was stripped off them and his name was called Satana, because he turned aside from the right way, and Shaddah, because he was cast out, and Daiwa, because he lost the apparel of his glory. And behold, from that time until the present day, he and all his hosts have been stripped of their apparel, and they go naked and have horrible faces. And when Satana was cast out from heaven, Adam was raised up so that he might ascend to paradise in a chariot of fire. And the angels went before him, singing praises. And the seraphim ascribed holiness unto him, and the cherubim ascribed blessing. 
and amid cries of joy and praises, Adam went into paradise. And as soon as Adam entered paradise, he was commanded not to eat of a certain tree. His entrance into heaven took place at the third hour of the eve of the Sabbath, i.e. on Friday morning. Notes. The fathers of the Egyptian and Ethiopian churches treat the story of the fall of Satan in great detail. According to them, Satan, or Satnael, was greatly astonished at the beauty and splendor of the sun and moon. And on the fourth day of the week, he declared to himself that he would set his throne above the stars and make himself equal to God. One week after the creation of Adam, Satan declared war on the hosts of Almighty God. These were commanded by Michael and consisted of 120,000 horsemen, 600,000 shield bearers, 700,000 mail clad horsemen in chariots of fire, 700,000 torch bearers, 800,000 angels with daggers of fire, 1 million slingers, 500,000 bearers of axes of fire, and 300,000 bearers of fiery crosses, and 400,000 bearers of lamps. The angels uttered their battle cries and began to fight, but Satan charged them and dispersed them. They reformed, but again Satan charged them and put them to flight. Then God gave the angels the cross of light, which bore the legend, In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And when they attacked the hosts of darkness under his cross, Satan became faint, and he and his forces withdrew, and Michael hurled them down into hell. The Abyssinian legend says that Satan was 1,700 cubits high, and his hand 70 cubits long, and his foot 7,000 cubits long. His mouth was forty cubits in width, his face was as broad as the distance of a day's journey, and the length of his eyebrows was a distance of three days' journey. From the Book of the Mysteries of Heaven and Earth From the Book of the Mysteries of Heaven and Earth The prototype of the great fight in heaven between the powers of light and darkness is found in ancient Egyptian religious texts, in more than one form. In the oldest form, Set, the devil, rebels against Herur, -er, the god of heaven, whose chief symbol are the sun and moon, and is utterly defeated. In the next form, Set attacks the sun god Ra, and is destroyed by him. The great ally of Set, called Apep or Apophis, and all his friends and devils, the Sibo or Sobao, are defeated and burnt up daily. In another form, Set makes war on Horus, the son of Osiris, and on Osiris himself, and is defeated utterly. The Coptic version of the legend was borrowed from the old hieroglyphic texts and then Christianized. Compare the following. When Satan saw Adam seated on a great throne with a crown of glory on his head and a scepter in his hand, and all the angels worshipping him, he was filled with anger. And when God said to him, Come, thou also, for thou shalt worship my image and likeness. Satan refused to do so, and, assuming an arrogant and insolent manner, he said, It is meet that he should worship me, for I existed before he came into being. When the father saw his overbearing attitude, he knew that Satan's wickedness and rebellion had reached their highest pitch. He ordered the celestial soldiers to take from him the written authority that was in his hand, to strip off his armor, and to hurl him down from heaven to earth. Satan was the greatest of the angels, and God had made him the commander-in-chief of the celestial hosts. And in the document which Satan held in his hand were written the names of all the angels under his command. Knowing their names, his authority over them was absolute. When God saw that the angels hesitated to take the document from him, he commanded them to bring a sharp reaping knife and to stab him on this side and that, right through his body to the backbone and shoulder blades, and Satan could no longer stand upright. And a cherub smote him, and broke his wings and his ribs, and having rendered him helpless, he cast Satan down from heaven upon the earth. Then he became the archdevil and the leader of those who were, who were cast out of heaven with him, and who henceforth were devils. From Budge, Coptic Martyrdoms, page 484. The Making of Eve and God cast a sleep upon Adam, and he slept. And God took a rib from the loins on the right side of Adam, 
and he made Kawa, i.e. Eve, from it. And when Adam woke up and saw Eve, he rejoiced in her greatly. And Adam and Eve were in paradise and clothed with glory and shining with praise for three hours. Now this paradise was situated on a high range of hills, and it was thirty spans according to the measurement of the Spirit, higher than all the high mountains. And Notes, God did not make Eve of earth, that she might not be considered something alien to Adam in nature. And he did not take her from Adam's fore parts, that she might not uplift herself against him, nor from his hind parts, that she might not be accounted despicable nor from his right side that she might not have preeminence over him, nor from his head that she might not seek authority over him, nor from his feet that she might not be trodden down and scorned in the eyes of her husband. But he took her from his left side, for the side is the place which unites and joins both front and back. Book of the Bee, Chapter 14, and Bar Habreus Ausar Reis. Further, God did not form Eve from Adam's head, that she might not carry her head proudly, nor from his eye, that she might not be curious, nor from his ear, that she might not be an eavesdropper, nor from his mouth, that she might not be gossiping, nor from his heart, that she might not be quarrelsome, nor from his hand, that she might not touch everything with her hand, nor from his feet, that she might not rove about. Now Moses, the prophet, said that God planted paradise in Eden and placed Adam there, Genesis 2.8. Notes, Paradise was situated on Mount Eden beyond the ocean, and it was filled with fruit-bearing trees. The great river which sprung up in it was parted into four heads, these the Pishon, which flowed through Havila, where there were barrels, and gold and stones of price. The Gihon, or the Nile of Egypt, the Decloth, the Tigris, which flows through Assyria, and the Parath, or the Euphrates. The keepers of paradise were Enoch and Elijah, and in it dwelt the souls of the righteous. The souls of sinners dwelt in a deep place outside Eden. The tree of good and evil that was in paradise did not possess these properties naturally, but only through the deed which was wrought by its means. Adam and Eve did not become naked and die the death of sin because they desired and ate of the freight of the fruit of the fig tree, but because they transgressed the law. The tree of which they ate may have been the fig tree, or the date palm, or the vine, or the ethrog, the citron. Mount Eden is probably the original of Jabal Kaf, of the Arabs. The Symbolism of Eden Now Eden is the Holy Church and the church is the compassion of God, which he was about to extend to the children of men. For God, according to his foreknowledge, knew what Satan had devised against Adam, and therefore he set Adam beforehand in the bosom of his compassion, even as the blessed David singeth concerning him in the psalm, XC, saying, Lord, thou hast been an abiding place for us throughout all generations. That is to say, Thou hast made us to have our abiding place in thy compassion. And when entreating God on behalf of the redemption of the children of men, David said, Remember thy church, which thou didst acquire in olden time. Psalm LXXIV 2 That is to say, Remember thy compassion, which thou art about to spread over our feeble race. Eden is the holy church, and the paradise which was in it is the land of rest and the inheritance of life, which God hath prepared for men, for all the holy children of men. And because Adam was priest and king and prophet, God brought him into paradise that he might minister in Eden, the holy church, even as the blessed man Moses testifieth concerning him, saying, that he might serve God by means of priestly ministration with praise, and that he might keep that commandment which had been entrusted to him by the compassion of God, and God made Adam and Eve to dwell in paradise. True is this word, and it proclaimeth the truth. That tree of life which was in the midst of paradise prefigured the redeeming cross, which is the veritable tree of life. And this it was that was fixed in the middle of the earth. Satan's Attack on Adam and Eve 
And when Satan saw that Adam and Eve were happy and joyful in paradise, that rebel was smitten sorely with jealousy, and he became filled with wrath. And he went up and took up his abode in the serpent. And he raised him up and made him to fly through the air to the skirts of Mount Eden, whereon was paradise. Now, why did Satan enter the body of the serpent and hide himself therein? Because he knew that his appearance was foul, and that if Eve saw his form, she would betake herself to flight straight away before him. Now the man who wished to teach the Greek language to a bird, now the bird that can learn the speech of men is called Babaga, i.e. the parrot. It first bringeth a large mirror and placeth between himself and the bird. He then beginneth to talk to the bird, and immediately the parrot heareth the voice of the man. It turneth round, and when it seeth its own form reflected in the mirror, it becometh pleased straight away, because it imagineth that a fellow parrot is talking to it. Then it inclineth its ear with pleasure, and listeneth to the words of the man who is talking to it, and it becometh eager to learn and to speak Greek. In this manner, i.e. with the object of making Eve believe that it was the serpent that spoke to her, did Satan enter in and dwell in the serpent? And he watched for the opportunity, and when he saw Eve by herself, he called her by her name. And when she turned round towards him, she saw her own form reflected in him. And she talked to him, and Satan led her astray with his lying words, because the nature of woman is soft or yielding. And when Eve had heard from him concerning that tree, straightway she ran quickly to it, and she plucked the fruit of disobedience from the tree of transgression of the command, and she ate. Then immediately she found herself stripped naked, and she saw the hatefulness of her shame, and she ran away naked and hid herself in another tree, and covered her nakedness with the leaves thereof. And she cried out to Adam, and he came to her, and she handed to him some of the fruit of which she had eaten, and he also did eat thereof. And when he had eaten, he also became naked. And he and Eve made girdles for their loins of the leaves of the fig trees. And they were arrayed in these girdles of ignominy for three hours. At midday they received their sentence of doom. And God made for them tunics of skin which was stripped from the trees. That is to say, of the bark of the trees, because the trees that were in paradise had soft barks. And they were softer than the, bis the byssus and silk wherefrom the garments worn by kings are made. And God dressed them in this soft skin, which was thus spread over a body of infirmities. Notes. The fathers of the Ethiopian church emphasized the difficulty which Satan found in entering paradise. He knew that he could not carry out his plan for ruining Adam if he entered paradise in his own form, and he decided that he must assume the form of some bird or animal or reptile if he was to succeed. He applied to the white bird Arzel and the green bird Basil and a red bird but each refused to take him to the place where Eve was. Then he applied to the elephant and the lion and the leopard and the hyena and the wild boar. The first four refused point blank to do what Satan wished, and the wild boar attempted to gore him with his tusks. On this Satan took to flight. He then went to the animal Sareg, which was commonly known as the digger of graves, but this animal refused to help him. And then Satan approached the animal called Taman, the front part of which was like a camel's foal. This creature agreed to help him, and, mounted on his back, Satan entered paradise and stood before Eve. The serpent became spokesman for him, and Eve hearkened to him and ate of the fruit, according to the book of the mysteries of heaven and earth. The tree was called Sezen, and each fruit cluster contained 150,000 grains or berries. It is described as a large and handsome tree, and it has been identified with the sandal or sandalwood tree. According to the same authorities, the tree of life was the prototype of the cross on which our Lord was crucified. Adam's Stay in Paradise At the third hour of the day, Adam and Eve ascended into paradise, and for three hours they enjoyed the good things thereof. For three hours they were in shame and disgrace, and at the ninth hour their expulsion from paradise took place. And as they were going forth sorrowfully, God spake unto Adam, and heartened him, and said unto him, Be not sorrowful, Adam, for I will restore unto thee thine inheritance. Behold, see how greatly I have loved thee. For though I have cursed the earth for thy sake, yet have I withdrawn thee from the operation of the curse. As for the serpent, 
I have fettered his legs and his belly, and I have given him the dust of the earth for food. And Eve have I bound under the yoke of servitude, inasmuch as thou hast transgressed my commandments, get thee forth, but be not sad. After the fulfillment of the times which I have allotted that, that you shall be in exile outside paradise, in the land which is under the curse, behold, I will send my son, and he shall go down from heaven for thy redemption, and he shall sojourn in a virgin, and shall put on a body of flesh, and through him redemption and a return shall be effected for thee. But command thy sons, and order them to embalm thy body after thy death with myrrh, cassia, and stockte. And they shall place thee in this cave, wherein I am making you to dwell this day, until the time when your expulsion shall take place from the regions of paradise to that earth which is outside it. And whosoever shall be left in those days shall take thy body with him, and shall deposit it on the spot which I shall sow him, in the center of the earth. For in that place shall redemption be effected for thee, and for all thy children. And God revealed unto Adam everything which the son would suffer on behalf of him. Plate 2 The baked clay cylinder inscribed with an account of the capture of Babylon by Cyrus, Kura Ash, the king of Persia, 538 BC. He restored to their original shrines throughout the country the images of the gods which a former king, Nabonidus, had elected in Babylon and gave the Jews permission to rebuild their temple. Adam's Expulsion from Paradise And when Adam and Eve had gone forth from Paradise, the door of Paradise was shut, and a cherub bearing a two-edged sword stood by it. According to the Book of the Bee, the cherub, or as some think, a terrible form endowed with a body, was armed with a spear and sword, each being made of fire. And Adam and Eve went down in, of spirit over the mountains of paradise and they found a cave in the top of the mountain and they entered and hid themselves therein when adam and eve left paradise they no longer had fruit and wine and bread and flesh to live upon and they subsisted on cooked grain and vegetables and the herbs of the earth of which they ate sparingly moreover the four-footed beasts and fowl and reptiles rebelled against them and some of them became enemies and adversaries unto them Book of the Bee, Chapter 17 Now Adam and Eve were virgins, and Adam wished to know Eve his wife. And Adam took from the skirts of the mountain of paradise gold and myrrh and frankincense, and he placed them in the cave. And he blessed the cave and consecrated it, that it might be the house of prayer for himself and his sons. And he called the cave Ni'arath Gaz, i.e. the cave of treasures. So Adam and Eve went down from that holy mountain of Eden, to the slopes which were below it, and there Adam knew Eve his wife. A marginal note in the manuscript says that Adam knew Eve thirty years after they went forth from paradise, and Eve conceived and brought forth Cain and Lubuda, his sister, with him, and Eve conceived again, and she brought forth Habil, Abel, and Kelimoth, his sister, with him. The book of the bee makes Kelimoth the twin sister of Cain, and Labuda the twin sister of Abel. And when the children grew up, Adam said unto Eve, Let Cain take to wife Kelimoth, who was brought forth with Abel, and let Abel take to wife Labuda, who was brought forth with Cain. And Cain said unto Eve his mother, I will take to wife my twin sister Labuda, and let Abel take to wife his twin sister Kelimoth. Now Labuda was beautiful. When Adam heard these words, which were exceedingly displeasing unto him, he said, it will be a transgression of the commandment for thee to take to wife thy sister, who is born with thee. Nevertheless, take ye to yourselves fruits of trees and the young of sheep, and get ye up to the top of this holy mountain. Then go ye into the cave of treasures, and offer ye up your offerings, and make your prayers, and then ye shall consort with your wives. And it came to pass that when Adam, the first priest, and Cain and Abel his sons, were going up to the top of the mountain, Satan entered into Cain and persuaded him to kill Abel, his brother, because of Labuda, and because his offering was rejected and was not accepted before God, whilst the offering of Abel was accepted. Cain's jealousy of his brother Abel was increased. 
And when they came down to the plain, Cain rose up against his brother Abel, and he killed him with a blow from a stone of flint. Then straightway Cain received the doom of death instead of curses, and he became a fugitive and a wanderer all the days of his life. And God drove him forth into exile in a certain part of the forest of Nod, or Nod. And Cain took to wife his twin sister and made the place of his abode there. Notes, Adam carried Abel to the cave of treasures and buried him therein, and he set by the side of the body a lamp which burned day and night. Abel was fifteen and a half years old when Cain, who was seventeen and a half years old, murdered him. Adam and Eve mourned for Abel, in great grief for one hundred and forty days. Book of Adam and Eve The Birth of Seth And Adam and Eve mourned for Abel one hundred years. And then Adam knew his wife again, and she brought forth Seth, the beautiful, a man mighty and perfect like unto Adam. And he became the father of the mighty men who lived before the flood. Notes, Seth was born in the 130th year of Adam's life. But the book of the bee says it was the 230th year. Adam and Seth and his sons dwelt on the top of Mount Eden, while Cain and his children lived on the plain below. The posterity of Seth. And to Seth was born Anosh, Enos, and Anosh begot Canaan, Canaan, and Canaan begot Mahalal, Mahalil. And these are the patriarchs who were born in the days of Adam, the death of Adam. And when Adam had lived 930 years, that is to say, until the 135th year of Mahalal, the day of his death drew nigh and came. And Seth, his son, and Anosh, and Canaan, and Mahalal gathered themselves together and came to him, and they were blessed by him, and he prayed over them. And he commanded his son Seth, and said unto him, Observe my son Seth, that which, I, that which I command thee this day, and do thou on the day of thy death give my command to Enosh, and repeat it to him. And let him repeat it to Canaan, and Canaan shall repeat it to Mahalal. And let this my command be handed on to all your generations. And when I die, embalm me with myrrh, and cassia, and stock tea, and deposit my body in the cave of treasures. And whosoever shall be left of your generations in that day, when you are going forth from this country which is round about paradise, shall take place, shall carry my body with him, and shall take it and deposit it in the center of the earth. For in that place shall redemption be effected for me and for all my children. And be thou, O my son Seth, governor of the sons of thy people, and thou shalt rule them purely and holily in, in the fear of God. And keep ye your offspring separate from the offspring of Cain the murderer. And when the report Adam is dying was known generally, all his offspring gathered together and came to him. That is to say, Seth, his son, and Anosh, and Canaan, and Malalal, they and their wives, and their sons and their daughters, and Adam blessed them. And the departure of Adam from this world took place in the 930th year, according to the reckoning from the beginning, on the 14th day of the moon, on the 6th day of the month of Nisan, April, at the ninth hour, on the day of the eve of the Sabbath, i.e. the Friday. At the same hour in which the Son of Man delivered up his soul to his Father on the cross, did our father Adam deliver up his soul to him that fashioned him. And he departed from this world. And when Adam was dead, his son Seth embalmed him, according as Adam had commanded him, with myrrh and cassia and stockti. Now Adam's dead body was the first body buried in the earth, and grief for him was exceedingly sore. And Seth and his sons mourned for his death one hundred and forty days, and they took Adam's body up to the top of the mountain and buried it in the cave of treasures. And after the families and peoples of the children of Seth had buried Adam, they separated themselves from the children of Cain the murderer. And Seth took Anosh, her, his firstborn, and Canaan and Malalal and their wives and children and led them up into the glorious mountain where Adam was buried. And Cain and all his descendants remained below on the plain where Cain slew Abel. So remember that as they're going up to this glorious mountain, that I think that that's the mountain at the pole. That's paradise is on the top of that mountain. And the earth surrounds it and it's in the middle of the plain. 
in the middle of the earth or in the center of the earth. The rule of Seth. And Seth became the governor of the children of his people, and he ruled them in purity and holiness. And because of their purity, they received the name, which is the best of all names, and were called the sons of God. They and their wives and their sons. Thus they lived in that mountain, in all purity and holiness, and in the fear of God. And they went up on the skirts of the mountain of paradise, and they became praisers and glorifiers of God in the place of that host of devils who fell from heaven. There they dwelt in peace and happiness. There was nothing about which they needed to feel anxiety. They had nothing to weary or trouble them, and they had nothing to do except to praise and glorify God with the angels. For they heard continually the voices of the angels who were singing praises in paradise, which was situated at no great height above them. In fact, only about thirty spans, according to the measure of the Spirit. So as I was saying there, that it's because they're at the North Pole and they're on Mount Meru or just below Mount Meru and just above them at Mount Meru and above it is paradise. Um, and that's also why the warm weather is there is the warm sweet smells drift down from heaven. There's some text in the other uh, book of uh, Atam and Ua where they talk about the cave of treasures and that's what he talks about is that where he placed Adam was uh done on purpose so that Adam wouldn't continually smell and hear and see the scents of of uh, heaven and it would tempt him and make him sad that he wasn't there anymore. For they heard continually their voices of the angels who were singing praises in paradise which was situated at no great height above them, in fact only about thirty spans according to the measure of the spirit. And they suffered neither toil nor fatigue, they had neither seed nor time nor harvest. But they fed themselves with the delectable fruits of glorious trees of all kinds, and they enjoyed the sweet scent and perfume of the breezes which were wafted forth to them from paradise. Thus lived those holy men who were indeed holy, and their wives were pure, and their sons were virtuous, and their daughters were chaste and undefiled. In them there was no rebellious thought, no envy, no anger, no enmity. In their wives and daughters there was no impure longing. Neither lasciviousness, nor cursing, nor lying was heard among them. The only oath which they used in swearing was, By the blood of Abel. And they and their wives and their children used to rise up early in the morning and go up to the top of that holy mountain and worship there before God. And they were blessed by the body of Adam, their father, and they lifted up their eyes to paradise and praised God. And thus they did all the days of their life. So as we were saying, as we were saying there, um, it's funny that I... This is not the part that I was reading that talked about that, so it's funny that came up next about the, the smells wafting down from heaven. So if you haven't heard that piece yet, go and listen to Zen Garcia's uh, Atam and Ua, the book of Adam and Eve, or the book of Atam and Ua at Zen Garcia at Endeavor Freedom, because he has some amazing readings there. And they were blessed by the body of Adam, and thus they did all the days of their lives. Notes, according to the book of the bee, chapter 18, Adam lived 930 years, and Seth lived 913 or 905 years. Seth was 250 years old, 105 years in Genesis uh, chapter 6, when he begot Enos. In the days of Seth, the knowledge of books went forth in the earth, but the church does not accept this. According to the book of Adam, 2.5, Seth knew good and evil when he was seven years of age, and he spent his days and nights in fasting and prayer, and he made an offering to God daily. Satan appeared to him and tried to persuade him to leave the holy mountain. Satan appeared to him and tried to persuade him to leave the holy mountain and to go and live with him and to marry one of his women. But Seth resisted him and mounting the altar of God drove him away. When Seth was 15 years old, Adam married him to Aklia, the sister of Abel. And when he was 20 years old, he begot Enos. And when Seth had lived 913 years, he became sick unto death. 
and Anosh his son, and Canaan, and Machlalel, and Jared, or Jared, and Henoch, Enoch, and their wives and their sons gathered together and came unto him, and they were blessed by him. And he prayed over them and commanded them and made them to take an oath and said unto them, I will make you to take an oath and to swear by the holy blood of Abel that none of you will go down from this holy mountain to the children of Cain the murderer. For ye know well the enmity which hath existed between us and Cain from the day whereon he slew Abel. And Seth blessed Anosh his son and gave him commands concerning the body of Adam and he made him ruler over the children of his people. And Seth ruled them in purity and in holiness, and he ministered diligently before the body of Adam. And Seth died when he was nine hundred and twelve years old. And on the seven and twentieth day of the blessed month of Ab, or August, on the second day of the week, the Monday, at the third hour, in the twentieth year of the life of Enoch, and Anosh, Seth's firstborn son, embalmed his body and buried him in the cave of treasures with his father Adam. And they made a mourning for him forty days. Notes, the book of Adam 2.12 says that Seth was embalmed with sweet spices and laid on the right side of Adam's body. But there, but there is no evidence that the Hebrews were acquainted with the art of mummification before they had intercourse with Egypt. The rule of Anosh. And Anosh rose up to minister before God in the cave of treasures, and he became the governor of the children of his people. And he kept all the commandments which his father Seth had commanded him. And he urged them to be constant in prayer. Notes, according to the Book of the Bee, chapter 18, Anosh was 299 years in Genesis chapter 9, or Genesis verse 9, so Anosh was 299 years old when he begot Canaan, and Anosh first called upon the name of the Lord. Some say that he first composed books upon the course of the stars and the signs of the zodiac. And in the days of Anosh, in his 820th year, Lamech, the blind man, killed Cain, the murderer, in the forest of Nod. Now this killing took place in the following manner. As Lamech was leaning on his youth, his son Tubal-Cain, and the youth was setting straight his father's arm in the direction in which he saw the quarry, he heard the sound of Cain moving about backwards and forwards in the forest. Now Cain was unable to stand still in one place and to hold his peace. And Lamech, thinking that it was a wild beast that was making a movement in the forest, raised his arm, and having made ready, drew his bow and shot an arrow towards that spot. And the arrow smote Cain between his eyes, and he fell down and died. And Lamech, thinking that he had shot game, spake to the youth, saying, Make haste and let us see what game we have shot. And when they went to the spot, and the boy on whom Lamech leaned had looked, he said unto him, O my lord, thou hast killed Cain. And Lamech moved his hands to smite them together, and as he did so, he smote the youth and killed him also. Notes, the book of Adam 2.13 says that Lamech was armed with a bow and large arrows and a sling and smooth stones. An arrow pierced one side of Cain and a stone from Lamech's sling knocked out both his eyes. Lamech smote the youth who led him about accidentally, but afterwards he smashed his head in with a stone. There are many versions of the story in Arabic, Ethiopic, and Hebrew, but they all agree in essential details. According to the Book of the Bee, chapter 18, the anvil and hammer and tongs were invented by Tubal Cain and Jubal. Who also constructed musical instruments, harps and pipes. Devils lived in the pipes and sang therein. And when Anosh had lived nine hundred and five years, and was sick unto death, all the patriarchs gathered themselves together and came unto him, viz. Canaan his firstborn son, and Malalel, and Jared, and Enoch, and Matushla or Methuselah, they and their wives and their sons. And they were blessed by him, and he prayed over them, and commanded them, and spake unto them, saying, 
I will make you to swear by the holy blood of Abel that not one of you shall go down from this mountain to the plain, nor into the encampment of the children of Cain, the murderer, and ye shall not mingle yourselves among them. Take ye good heed unto this matter, for ye well know what enmity hath existed between us and them from the day whereon Cain slew Abel. And he blessed Cain and his son, and commanded him concerning the body of Adam, that he should minister before it all the days of his life, and that he should rule over the children of his people in purity and holiness. And Enosh died at the age of nine hundred and five years on the third day of the month of the first Tishrin, October, on the day of the Sabbath, in the fifty-third year of the life of Methuselah. And Canaan, his firstborn, embalmed him and buried him in the cave of treasures, with Adam and Seth his father. And they made a mourning for him forty days. Notes, the book of Adam, 2.14, says that Enosh was nine hundred eighty-five years old when he died and that he was laid on the left-hand side of Adam in the Cave of Treasures. Plate 3. General view of the ziggurat and the excavations at Ur of the Chaldees. The rule of Canaan. And Canaan stood up before God to minister in the Cave of Treasures. He was an honorable and pure man, and he governed the children of his people in the complete fear of God. And he fulfilled all the commandments of Anosh his father. And when Canaan had lived 920 years, in the book of Adam and the book of the bee, 910 years, and was sick unto death. All the patriarchs gathered together and came unto him, viz. Malalel his son, and Yared, and Enoch, and Methuselah, and Lamech, they and their wives and their children, and were blessed by him. And he prayed over them and commanded them, saying, I will make you swear by the holy blood of Abel that none of you shall go down from this holy mountain into the camp of the children of Cain, the murderer, for ye all need... For you all know well what enmity hath existed between us and them since the day whereon he killed Abel. And he blessed his son Malalel, and admonished him concerning the body of Adam, and said unto him, Behold, O my son Mahlalel, minister thou before God in purity and holiness in the cave of treasures, and depart not thou from the presence of the body of Adam all the days of thy life. And be thou the governor of the children of thy people, and rule thou them purely and holily. Canaan died, being nine hundred and twenty years old, on the thirty on the thirteenth day of the month of Hezeron, June, on the fourth day of the week, Wednesday, at midday, in the five and sixtieth year of the life of Lamech, the father of Noah. And Malalel his son embalmed him, and buried him in the cave of treasures. And they made mourning for him forty days. Notes according to Genesis verse 12, Canaan was 70 years old when he begot Malalel, but the book of the bee gives 140 years. The book of Adam says that the people made offerings for him after the custom of their fathers, a statement that seems to suggest that the Hebrews not only mummified their dead, but presented funerary offerings to them after the manner of the Egyptians. The rule of Malalel. And Machlalel rose up and ministered before God in the place of Canaan, his father. He was in constant prayer by day and by night, and he urged earnestly the children of his people to observe holiness and purity and to pray without ceasing. And when Machlalel had lived 895 years and the day of his departure drew nigh and he was sick unto death, all the patriarchs gathered together and came unto him, viz. Jared, his firstborn, and Enoch, and Methuselah, and Lamech, and Noah, they and their wives and their children. And they were blessed by him. And he prayed over them and commanded them, saying, I will make you to swear by the holy blood of Abel that not one of you shall go down from this holy mountain, and he shall not permit any one of your descendants to go down to the plain to the children of Cain, the murderer. For ye all know well what enmity hath existed between us and them from the day whereupon he slew Abel. And he blessed Jared his firstborn, and he commanded him concerning the body of Adam, and revealed unto him the place whereto he should make ready to go. And he also commanded him, and made him to swear an oath, saying, Thou shalt not depart from the body of our father, Adam, all the days of thy life. And thou shalt be the governor of the children of thy people, and shalt rule them in chastity and holiness. And Malalel died, being eight hundred and ninety-five years old, on the second day of the month Nisan, April, on the first day of the week, Sunday, at the third hour of the day in the four and thirtieth year of the life of Noah. And Jared, his firstborn, embalmed him and buried him in the cave of treasures. And the people made a mourning for him forty days. 
Notes, according to Genesis verse 15, Malalel was 65 years old when he begot Jared, but the Book of the Bee gives 165 years. The Book of Adam 2.16 says he fell sick when he was 870 years old. The latter work makes the patriarch tell Jared that the people will go down from the mountain and mingle with the children of Cain and perish with them. The rule of Jared. And Jared, his son, rose up and ministered before God in the cave of treasures. He was a perfect man and was complete in all the virtues, and he was constant in prayer by day and by night. And because of the excellence of his life and conversation, his days were longer than those of all the children of his people. And in the days of Jared, in the five hundred in the five hundredth year of his life, the children of Seth broke the oaths which their fathers had made them to swear. And they began to go down from that holy mountain to the encampment of iniquity of the children of Cain, the murderer. And in this way, the fall of the children of Seth took place. Notes, the book of Adam 2.17 says that Jared continued to govern the people successfully until the end of the 485th year of his life. At this time, Satan and 30 of his devils appeared to Jared in the form of handsome men and called him from the cave of treasures. He came out to them and thought they were strangers and asked them who they were. In answer, Satan told him that he was Adam and that among his companions were Abel, Seth, Enos, Canaan, and other kinsmen of Jared. He invited Jared to come with him and live with him in the garden which God had given him. And at length, Jared was persuaded to leave the cave and go with him. When they arrived at the top of the mountain of the sons of Cain, Satan pretended that he pretended that he had left a garment for Jared by the cave and sent one of his devils back to fetch it, telling him at the same time to extinguish the lamp which was burning in the cave near Adam's body. Satan and Jared rested by a fountain and food was brought out to them by the sons and daughters of Cain, but Jared refused to eat or drink. Satan entreated him to put aside his sadness and to do as he was going to do. Thereupon Satan and five of his devils each seized a woman and committed fornication with her. And on seeing this exhibition of iniquity, Jared burst into tears and began to pray to God to be delivered from that place. When he began to pray, the devils took to flight, and God sent an angel who brought him back to his holy mountain. When he returned to the cave, his people told him that the lamp had been extinguished, and that the bodies of the patriarchs had been scattered about, and that voices had come from them. On entering the cave, a voice came to him from Adam's body and warned him to beware of Satan and his wiles, and told him to relight the lamp from the fire on the altar at which Adam had ministered. The lamp was relighted at the end of the 450th year of Jared's life. Eighty years later, his people began to go down to the children of Cain and to mingle with their women. And in the fortieth year of Jared, the first thousand years from Adam to Jared came to an end. And in these years, the handicraftsmen of sin and the disciples of Satan appeared, for he was their teacher, and he entered in and dwelt in them. And he poured into them the spirit of the operation of error, through which the fall of the children of Seth was to take place. That is the first thousand years. The second thousand years. Jared to the flood. Of the transmission of the art of playing the harp, that is to say of music and singing and dancing. Jubal and Tubal-Cain, the two brethren, the sons of Lamech, the blind man who killed Cain, invented and made all kinds of instruments of music. Jubal made reed instruments and harps and flutes and whistles, and the devils went and dwelt inside them. When men blew into the pipes, the devils sang inside them and sent out sounds from inside them. Tubal-Cain made cymbals and sistra and tambourines or drums and lasciviousness and fornication increased among the children of Cain, and they had nothing to occupy them except fornication. Now they had no obligation to pay tribute, and they had neither prince nor governor, and eating and drinking and lasciviousness and drunkenness and dancing and singing to instruments of music, and the wanton sportings of the devils, and the laughter which affordeth pleasure to the devils, and the sounds of the furious lust of men neighing after women, and Satan, finding his opportunity in this work of error, rejoiced greatly, because thereby he could compel the sons of Seth to come down from that holy mountain. There they had been made to occupy the place of that army of angels that fell with Satan, 
There they were beloved by God. There they were held in honor by the angels, and were called sons of God. Even as the blessed David saith in the psalm, I have said, Ye are gods, and all of you sons of the Most High. Psalm LXXXII 6 Meanwhile, fornication reigned among the daughters of Cain, and without shame several women would run after one man, and one man would attack another, and they committed fornication in the presence of each other shamelessly. For all the devils were gathered together in that camp of Cain, and unclean spirits entered into the women and took possession of them. The old women were more lascivious than the maidens. Fathers and sons defiled themselves with their mothers and sisters. Sons respected not even their own fathers, and fathers made no distinction between their sons and other men. And Satan had been made ruler or prince of that camp. And when the men and women were stirred up to lascivious frenzy by the devilish playing of the reeds which emitted, which emitted musical sounds, and by the harps which the men played through the operation of the power of the devils, and by the sounds of the tambourines and of the sistra, which were beaten and rattled through the agency of evil spirits, the sounds of their laughter were heard in the air above them, and ascended to that holy mountain. And when the children of Seth heard the noise and uproar and shouts of laughter in the camp of the children of Cain, about one hundred of them who were mighty men of war gathered together and set their faces to go down to the camp of the children of Cain. When Jared heard their words and knew their intention, he became sorely afflicted. And he sent and called them to him and said unto them, By the holy blood of Abel, I will have you swear that not one of you shall go down from this holy mountain. Remember ye the oaths which our fathers Seth and Enosh and Canaan and Malalel made you to swear. And Enoch also said unto them, Hearken, O ye children of Seth, no man who shall transgress the commandment of Jared and break the oaths of our fathers and go down from this mountain shall never again ascend it. But the children of Seth would neither hearken to the commandment of Jared nor to the words of Enoch, and they dared to transgress the commandment. And those hundred men, who were mighty men of war, went down to the camp of Cain. And when they saw that the daughters of Cain were beautiful in form, and that they were naked and unashamed, the children of Seth became inflamed with the fire of lust. And when the daughters of Cain saw the goodliness of the children of Seth, they gripped them like ravening beasts and defiled their bodies. And the children of Seth slew their souls by fornication with the daughters of Cain. And when the children of Seth wished to go up again to that holy mountain, after they had come down and fallen, the stones of that holy mountain became fire in their sight. And having defiled their souls with the fire of fornication, God did not permit them to ascend to that holy place. And moreover, very many others made bold and went down after them, and they too fell. Notes This story is told at great length in the book of Adam, 2.20. Satan appeared in the form of one Gunun and taught him to make horns and trumpets, stringed instruments, cymbals, psalteries, lyres, harps, and flutes. Into these Satan himself entered and made the music which came from them. Gunun made corn spirit and established drinking booths in which men assembled and drank and ate fruit. Then Satan taught Gunun to make weapons of war out of iron and when men were drunk, they killed each other with them. Next, Satan taught men how to dye their garments crimson and purple, and they arrayed themselves in gaudy attire and began to race their horses. Little by little, the children of Seth began to wish to join the sons of Cain. And when the devils had shown them a way down the mountain, one hundred of them went down to the plain and were led astray by the women whose hands and feet were stained with bright dyes and whose faces had tattoo marks on them. When the Sethites tried to return to the top of the mountain, the stones turned into coals of fire, and they could not pass over them. Company after company of the children of Seth went down to the plain, and at length only Yared and a few others remained on the mountain. The Ethiopic Book of Enoch supplies interesting details about the fall of the children of Seth. The leaders of those who went down from Ardis on Mount Hermon, where Samyaza, the commander-in-chief, Urakiba, Ramael, Kokabil, Tamail, Ramuel, Danel, Zakilo, Sarakuyal, Asael, Armaros, Batral, Anani, Zakeba, Samsoi, Sawel, Sartael, Turael, Yomyael, and Azaziel, 
each of these was over a company of ten. The names of two of the Decarchs of the two hundred angels are omitted. These angels took to themselves wives and taught them the use of spells and enchantments and the use of plants and trees for medicinal purposes. The daughters of Cain conceived and a tradition in the Kebra Nagast says that the children were so large that they could not be born in the ordinary way but had to be removed from their mothers by the umbilicus or by a cesarean section. These children grew up and became giants 3,000 cubits in height. And when they had devoured all the provisions which their neighbors had collected, they began to fight against men and to eat them. And at length they ate the flesh and drank the blood of each other. Concerning these giants, the book of Enoch chapter 15 says, Now the giants who were produced from the spirits and the flesh shall be called evil spirits on earth, and their habitation shall be on the earth. Evil spirits shall proceed from their bodies, and the spirits of the giants shall consume and persecute and lay waste, and fight and work destruction on the earth and afflict men. They shall neither eat food of any kind, nor suffer thirst, and they shall remain invisible. And these, and these spirits shall attack the children of men and women, for from them have they come forth. The wickedness of these giants became so great that the earth complained to God, at this time, Azazel taught men the art of working in metals and the use of stibium or eye paint and the art of dyeing stuffs in bright colors. Amazarak taught enchantments, i.e. magic, and the knowledge of herbs. Armaros taught how spells were to be broken. Barakal taught astrology and Kokabel taught the knowledge of science. Tamel taught astronomy and Azradel taught concerning the moon. Book of Enoch, Chapter Eight, chapter nine. The originals of these seven sages were probably the seven wise men who were revered by the Babylonians. Interesting. Did you catch that? So the seven sages were the seven wise men, and really that was the seven devils. And when Jared had lived nine hundred and sixty years, and the day of his departure approached, and came nigh and arrived, all the patriarchs gathered themselves together and came unto him viz. Enoch, his firstborn, and Methuselah, and Lamech, and Noah, they and their wives and their children, and were blessed by him. And he prayed over them and said unto them, I will make you to swear by the holy blood of Abel that you will not go down from this holy mountain. For I know that God will not allow you to remain very much longer in this holy country. Inasmuch as ye have transgressed the commandment of your fathers, ye shall surely be cast out into that outer country and ye shall no longer have your habitation on the skirts of the mountain of paradise. And take ye good heed to this. Let him that is among you who shall go forth from that holy country take with him the body of our father Adam, and the offerings of gold, frankincense, and myrrh that are in the cave of treasures, and let him carry away and deposit the body in the place wherein he shall be commanded by God to set it down. And thou, my son Enoch, depart thou not from before the body of Adam, but minister before God purely and holily all the days of thy life. And Jared died, being nine hundred and sixty-two years old, on the thirteenth day of the month of Iyar, May, on the day of the eve of the Sabbath, Friday, at sunset, in the three hundred and three sixty, in the three hundred and sixty-sixth year of the life of Noah. And Enoch his son embalmed him and buried him in the cave of treasures, and they made mourning for him forty days. Notes, the Book of the Bees says that Yared was 962 years old when he died. The Rule of Enoch And Enoch stood up to minister before God in the Cave of Treasures. And the children of Seth turned aside from the right path and willed to go down to the children of Cain on the plain. And Enoch and Methuselah and Lamech and Noah mourned over them. And Enoch had ministered before God for fifty years in the three hundred and sixty-fifth year of the life of Noah. And when Enoch knew that God was about to remove him from the earth, he called Methuselah and Lamech and Noah and said unto them, I know that God is wroth with this generation, and that a pitiless judgment hath been decreed for the people thereof. Ye are the chiefs of this generation, and the remnant thereof. For no other man shall be born on this mountain who shall be the chief of the children of his people. 
But take ye good heed to yourselves, and see that ye minister before God in purity and holiness. And when Enoch had given them his commandment in these words, God removed him to the land of life, and to the delectable mansions which are round about paradise, and to that country which is beyond the reach of death. And of all the children of Seth, there remained only these three patriarchs in the mountain of the triumphant ones, viz. Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah. For all the others had betaken themselves to the encampment of the sons of Cain. Notes. Then Michael, Gabriel, Cyril, and Uriel looked down from heaven and saw the wickedness which Azazel had done in the world. And they heard the appeal which the souls of the dead were making to heaven. And they reported the matter to the Most High. When God heard their words, he sent the angel Arsialior, or the, to the son of Lamech, i.e. Noah, with the command, Hide thyself. No mention is made of Methuselah, who begot Lamech when he was 187 years old, and who lived 969 years. And Lamech, who lived 777 years, and begot Noah, in the 182nd year of his age, was passed over in favor of his son. Noah consolidated his position by marrying the daughter of Enoch. The angel revealed to Noah that a flood was about to cover the earth, and told him how to escape from it. Then God commanded Raphael to bind Azazel hand and foot, and to thrust him into a dark hole in the desert of Dudael, a place near Jerusalem, and heap stones and rocks upon him. There he was to remain until the day of judgment, when he would be cast into the fire and consumed. Gabriel was sent to destroy all the children of fornication, and Michael was sent to bind Samyaza and the other Decarchs of the children of Seth, and to imprison them under the mountains of the earth for seventy generations, after which time they were to be taken to the abyss of fire and tortured there forever. Book of Enoch, Chapter 10 The Book of the Mysteries of Heaven and Earth by Abba Bakyala Mikhail Ed Parakon says that it was the men who taught man the arts of civilization who caused God to bring the flood on the earth. This work gives the names of these men and describes their inventions. Thus, Papyrus understood the sun, Rurid quarried stones, Zarel instituted the month, Pinene introduced horse riding or racing, Gale invented the axe, Tigana invented the shield, Horary taught men to play musical instruments, Yebe taught men working in iron, and Meged taught horse riding. Nagodi discovered medicinal springs and made known the planetary hours when the waters were most effective. Garge made the first corn grinder, and Seder taught men how to mix dough. Gimer taught the use of earthenware vessels for food. Zare taught men to milk animals. Hege taught men to make roofs, and Tentareb showed them how to make doors. Safer, Safer taught butter making. Halage discovered how to carve wood and stone. Hedair was the first to cultivate trees. Sino taught house building and Toph invented the potter's craft. Ator Begas invented agricultural implements and Sebedegas introduced the use of coal, an eye paint or stibium. Zara invented the brewing of beer while Betanaladas invented the oven. Nafil taught men to make plantations and gardens, while Yarbe discovered how to fell trees and saw them up. Elio taught dancing. Pinamus invented architecture and writing. Agelaman taught the use of beasts and plowing and how to drive furrows. Cusus invented plows and leather whips. Accor discovered bronze and copper. Certain men taught working in cedar and willow wood. Wasag and Abaregya taught men the game of Tabat, and Nair and Zaberagwed taught them to play the games of Atawama and Akis, the games of the circus. Plate 4 1. The inscribed cone of Ur Namu, which was inserted in the vertical joint of one of his buildings. The Rule of Noah. And when Noah saw that sin had increased in his generation, he preserved himself in virginity for five hundred years. Then God spake unto him and said unto him, Take unto thee wife Hakel, the daughter of Namus, or Hakel Namus, the daughter of Enoch, the brother of Mesuthla, 
And God revealed unto him concerning the flood which he was making ready to produce. And he spake to him and said unto him, One hundred and thirty years from this moment I will make a flood. Plate 4-2, an arched doorway in the northeast wall of the sanctuary of Idulamach of the time of Kuri Galzu, about 1600 BC. Notes, the book of Adam says that Hakel was the daughter of Abaraz, who was one of the children of the family of Enos, who went into perdition. If this be so, Noah married a woman who was akin to the children of Cain. The book of the bee merely states that Noah's wife was, the, was of the children of Seth. The Building of the Ark And God said unto Noah, Make for thyself an ark for the saving of the children of thy house, and build it in the plain below this mountain, in the encampment of the children of Cain. And ye shall cut down the timber for the same from the trees that are on this mountain, and thus shall be the dimensions thereof. Its length shall be three hundred cubits according to thy cubit, its breadth shall be fifty cubits, and its height thirty cubits, and above it shall be finished off one cubit. And make three stories in it. The lowermost shall be for wild animals and cattle. The middle one shall be for the birds and feathered fowl. And the topmost shall be for thee and the children of thy house. And make in it cisterns for water and cupboards for food. And make to thyself a striking board of eshkar, a wood which, would, which will not rot, but three cubits long and a cubit and a half in breadth. And there shall be a hammer of the same kind of wood. And with it thou shalt strike the board three times in the day, once in the morning, so that the workmen may be gathered together for the work of the ark, and once at midday that they may eat food, and once at sunset so that they may cease from their labor. And when thou strikest the board and men hear the sound of the blows, sayeth un and say unto thee, What is it thou that thou doest? Thou shalt say unto them, God is going to make a flood of waters. And Noah did as commanded him. And there were born unto him three sons within the space of a hundred years, Shem, Ham, and Japhet. And they took unto them wives of the daughters of Methuselah. According to the book of the bee, the stories were to have boards and projecting ledges, each board being one cubit long and one span broad. The wood used was either box or teak, and the ark was pitched within and without. The book of Adam, 3.2 says that each story was 10 cubits high. The first was for lions and other animals and ostriches. The second was for birds and reptiles. And the third for Noah and his sons, Shem, Ham, and Japhet, and their wives. The cisterns were to be lined with lead inside and out. Noah begot his sons during the hundred years in which he was building the ark. During, their, during these years he ate no animal food and he wore the same pair of sandals which did not wear out and the same apparel and headcloth. And he carried the same staff. His hair neither increased nor diminished. His sons married daughters of Methuselah. The death of Lamech. And when Lamech had lived 770 years, he died during the lifetime of Methuselah, his father, 40 years before the flood, on the 21st day of the month of Elul, September. On the first day of the week, Sunday, in the sixty-eighth year of the life of Shem, the firstborn of Noah. And Noah, his firstborn, embalmed him. And Methuselah, his father, sw swathed him for burial. And they buried him in the cave of treasures, and mourned for him forty days. Notes. The book of Adam says that Lamech was 553 years old when he died. But the book of the bee gives his age as 774 or 777 years the rule of Methuselah and Noah. And Methuselah and Noah remained alone on the mountain, for all the children of Seth had gone down from the skirts on the mountain of paradise to the plain where the children of Cain lived. And men, the children of Seth, had intercourse with the daughters of Cain, who conceived of them, and brought forth men, giants, and the sons of giants, who were like unto towers. Now because of this certain ancient writers have fallen into error and have written, the angels came down from heaven and had intercourse with men. And by them these famous giants have been produced, but this is not true. For those who have written in this manner did not understand the facts. 
Behold, O my brother readers, and ye know ye that it is not in the nature of beings of the spirit to beget. Neither is it in the nature of the devils who are unclean beings and workers of wickedness and lovers of adultery to beget, because there are neither males nor females among them. And since the time when the angels fell, not another angel has been added to their number. And if the devils were able to have intercourse with women, they would not leave unravished a single virgin in all the race of the children of men. The Death of Methuselah And when Methuselah had lived 969 years, and the day of his departure had drawn nigh, Noah and Shem and Ham and Japhet and their wives came unto him. Now of all the posterity of Seth who had not betaken themselves down to the plain, only these eight souls were left, viz. Noah, Shem, Ham, Japhet, and their wives, for no children were born to them before the flood. And when these gathered themselves together to Methuselah, and they had been blessed by him, he embraced them and kissed them sorrowfully and wept over the fall of the children of Seth. And he said unto them, of all the tribes and families of your fathers, this remnant consisting of eight souls alone is left. May the Lord God of our father bless you, the Lord God who formed our father Adam and Eve by themselves, and they were fruitful and multiplied, and the whole of the blessed land which was round about paradise was filled with their progeny. It shall make you to be fruitful and to multiply, and the whole earth shall be filled with you. He shall save you from the terrible wrath which had which hath been decreed against this rebellious generation, and he shall be with you, and he shall protect you, and the gift which was given by God unto our father Adam shall go forth with you from this holy country. And these three measures of the wheat of blessings which God gave unto your father Adam shall serve as leaven, and shall be kneaded into your seed, and into the seed of your children that is to say, royalty, priesthood, and prophecy. Hearken thou, Noah, thou blessed of the Lord. Behold, I am going forth from this world like all my fathers, but thou and thy children shall be saved. And thou shalt do everything which I am commanding you to this day. And thou shalt do everything which I am commanding you to do this day, for God will make the flood. When I die, embalm my body, and bury me in the cave of treasures with my fathers. Take thy wife and thy sons, and the wives of thy sons, and get thee down from this holy mountain, and take with thee the body of our father Adam, and these three offerings, gold and myrrh and frankincense. Set the body of Adam in the middle of the ark, and lay these offerings upon him. Thou and thy sons shall occupy the eastern part of the ark, and thy wife and thy sons' wives shall occupy the western part thereof. Thy wives shall not pass over you. Thy wives shall not pass over to you, and ye shall not pass over to them. Ye shall neither eat nor drink with them, and ye shall have no intercourse whatsoever with them until ye go forth from the ark. Now this generation hath provoked God to wrath, and he will neither permit them to be neighbors of those who are in paradise, nor to praise him with the angels. And when the waters of the flood have subsided from the face of the earth, and ye go forth from the ark, and ye take up your abode in that land, thou, O Noah, the blessed of the Lord, shalt not depart from the ark, from the body of our father Adam, but minister thou before God in the ark purely and holily all the days of thy life. And these offerings shall be placed in the east, and command thou, Shem, thy firstborn, to take up with him after thy death the body of our father Adam, and to carry it and deposit it in the middle of the earth. And let him establish there a man from among his descendants who shall minister there. And he shall be one who is set apart, Nazira, all the days of his life. He shall not take a wife, he shall not shed blood, and he shall not offer up these offerings of wild animals and feathered fowl, but he shall offer unto God bread and wine. For by these redemption shall be made for Adam and all his posterity, and the angel of God shall go before him, and he shall show him the place where the middle of the earth is situated, and the apparel of him that shall stand up there to minister before the body of Adam shall be the skins of wild animals. He shall not shave off the hair of his head, and he shall not cut his nails, but he shall remain alone in his natural state, because he is the priest of God the Most High.
notes according to the book of Adam 4 or 5 Shem was to appoint Melchizedek see Genesis uh, Genesis 14 18 through 24 and Hebrews chapter 7 the son of Canaan according to the book of Adam Shem was to appoint Melchizedek the son of Canaan and grandson of Arphaxad to be the priest of the Most High and he was to stand and minister on the mountain which is in the middle of the earth he was to wear a garment of skin and have a leather girdle about his loins and his apparel was to be humble and without ornament and when Methuselah had commanded Noah to do all these things he died with tears in his eyes and sorrow in his heart he was 969 years old when he died on the 14th day of the month Adar March on the first day of the week Sunday in the 79th year of the life of Shem the son of Noah and Noah his grandson embalmed the body of Methuselah with myrrh and cassia and stockte and Noah and his sons buried him in the cave of treasures and they and their wives made mourning for him 40 days and when the days of his mourning had passed Noah went into the cave of treasures and embraced and kissed the holy bodies of Seth and Enosh and Canaan and Malalel and Jared and Methuselah and Lamech his father and he was greatly moved and tears gushed from his eyes and Noah carried the body of our father Adam and the body of Eve and his firstborn Shem carried the gold and Ham carried the myrrh and Japhet the frankincense and they went forth from the cave of treasures the book of Adam does not mention Eve and as they were coming down from that holy mountain they were smitten sorely with grief and they wept in agony because they were to be deprived of that holy place and the habitation of their fathers and weeping painfully and wailing sorrowfully and enveloped in gloom they said remain in peace O holy paradise thou habitation of our father Adam he went forth from thee alive but stripped of glory and naked and behold at his death he was deprived of thy nearness he and his progeny were cast out into exile in that land of curses to pass their days there in pain in sicknesses and in labor and in weariness and in trouble remain in peace O cave of treasures remain in peace O habitation and inheritance of our fathers remain ye in peace O our fathers and patriarchs pray ye for us O ye who have lived in the dust ye friends and beloved ones of the living God pray ye for the remnant of your posterity which is left O ye who have propitiated God make supplication unto him on our behalf in your prayers remain in peace O Anosh remain ye in peace O ye ministers of God Canaan and Malalal and Jared and Methuselah and Lamech and Enoch cry out in sorrow on our behalf remain in peace O haven and asylum of the angels O ye our fathers cry out in sorrow on our behalf because ye will be deprived of our society and we will cry out in sorrow because we are cast out into a bare land for our habitation will be with the wild beasts and as they were coming down from that holy mountain they kissed the stones thereof and embraced the delectable trees thereof and in this wise they came down and they wept with great sorrow and shed scalding or bitter tears and suffering sorely they descended to the plain and Noah went into the ark and deposited the body of Adam in the middle thereof and he placed these offerings upon it now in the year wherein Noah went into the ark the second thousand years of the posterity of Adam to the time of the flood came to an end according to what the 70 wise writers have told us notes the book of Adam 3 6 says that when Noah and his sons were carrying the bottom body of Adam out of the cave the bodies of the other patriarchs cried out and asked the body of Adam if they were to be separated from it Adam replied that he must leave the holy mountain and told them that he knew God would bring their bodies together again on another occasion and bade them to wait patiently Adam asked God to allow the lighted lamp to remain with the bodies in the cave until the resurrection this God did and then he closed the cave until the day of the resurrection Noah and his sons marveled greatly when they heard the bodies of the patriarchs talking together in the cave having carried away the body of Adam and the gold myrrh and frankincense they returned to the mountain intending to enter the cave once again they sought carefully but could not find the cave and then they knew God had sealed it 
And then they knew God had sealed it and had hidden it from them, so that they might never dwell therein again. The Third Thousand Years The third thousand years from the flood to the reign of Ru, or Reu, Noah's entry into the ark. The entrance of Noah into the ark took place on the day of the eve of the Sabbath, Friday, on the seventeenth day of the blessed month of Er, May. On the Friday in the morning, i.e. the third hour, the beasts and the cattle went into the lowermost story, and at midday all the feathered fowl and all the reptiles went into the middle story. And at sunset Noah and his sons went into the ark, on the east side of the third story, and his wife and the wives of his sons went to the west side. And the body of Adam was deposited in the middle of the ark, wherein also all the mysteries of the church were deposited. Thus women in church shall be on the west side, and men on the east side, so that the men may not see the faces of the women, and the women may not see the faces of the men. Thus also was it in the ark the women were on the west side, and the men on the east side, and the body of our father Adam was placed between them, like a raised stand or throne. And as quietness reigneth in the church between men and women, so also peace reigned in the ark between the wild beasts and the feathered fowl and the creeping things or reptiles. And as kings and judges and rich men and poor men and governors and sick men and beggars live in a concord, that is to say in a general bond of peace, so also was it in the ark. For lions and panthers and savage beasts of prey lived in peace and harmony with the cattle. And the beasts that were fierce and strong lived in peace with those that were timid and weak. And the lion with the ox, and the wolf with the lamb. And the lion's whelp with the calf, and the serpent with the dove, and the hawk with the sparrow. The Flood And when Noah and his sons had gone into the ark, and his wife and the wives of his sons, on the seventeenth day of the month of Er, May, at sunset, the door of the ark was shut fast. And Noah and his sons in captivity in the darkness. And as soon as the door of the ark was shut, the floodgates of the heavens were opened, and the foundations of the earth were rent asunder. And ocean, that great sea which surroundeth the whole earth, poured forth its floods. And whilst the floodgates of heaven were open, and the foundations of the earth were rent asunder, the storehouses of the winds burst their bolts. And storm and whirlwind swept forth, and ocean roared and hurled its floods upon the earth. And the children of Seth, who had besmirched themselves in the mire of fornication, ran to the door of the ark and entreated Noah to open them, and entreated Noah to open to them the door of the ark. And when they saw the water floods which were swirling about them and engulfing them on all sides, they were in great tribulation. And they tried to climb up the mountains of paradise, but were unable to do so. Now the ark was closed and sealed, and the angel of the Lord stood over one side of it that he might act as the pilot thereof. And when the floods of waters mastered the children of Seth, and they began to drown in their great and mighty waves, then was fulfilled that which David spake concerning them, saying, I said, Ye are gods, and all of ye.